This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honor of our Blessed Mother. Mary as the Ark of the Covenant. Why would this make her Immaculate? If the Virgin Mary is described as the Ark of the Covenant in Sacred Scripture, why would that make her Immaculate, free from sin, conceived without sin, having lived a sinless life? Let's have a look. Almighty God directed Moses to make the Ark of the Covenant, to make it perfect, humanly speaking. You know, the Ark of the Covenant was the vessel the vessel in which sacred items were going to be contained. Almighty God gives very clear descriptions for the composition of this vessel. He says it has to be made of acacia wood, a wood the Jews understood as incorruptible, a wood that would not decay. And he was told to gilt that wood in gold, both on the inside and the out, and that that ark would be surrounded by cherubim seated on the top. The ark was perfect then in view of how it was made. It was a perfect kind of material. It was perfect physically speaking. But also it was perfect physically speaking in view of the fact it would contain sacred contents. It would contain the tablets. It would contain some manna. It would contain Aaron's staff, all of which are types of Christ. Moreover, we believe that Almighty God, in a spiritual manner, dwelt within that ark. And by night, there was the pillar, the pillar of fire, and during the day, a cloud covering that ark of the covenant, indicating God's dwelling or God's accompaniment. The Spirit of God accompanied the Ark of the Covenant. Holiness was required to touch the Ark, otherwise terrible consequences. We see that in a number of individuals. We see that in Hophni and Phineas, who dare to take the Ark and process along with it whilst their hearts were sinful. We see that in the man who touches the Ark, but he's not a priest, and so he is struck dead by Almighty God. The ark required holiness to touch. The ark was so holy because it had the dwelling of Almighty God. The argument is then that if Mary is described as an ark of the covenant, as the ark of the covenant, then she would be perfect. And just as a physical ark was physically perfect, if Mary is the Ark of the Covenant, then it means that she's going to be immaculate. She's going to be perfect, morally speaking. A human being, a human person, can have a certain degree of physical integrity, but a human being's prized possession is their soul, their heart, their will. And if Mary is to be the Ark of the Covenant, it must be referring to a perfection, not purely on a physical level, but on a moral level. An Ark, a physical Ark, cannot sin. It cannot defile itself physically. It can only defile itself in terms of those who touch it, who approach it. And as we see, that physical Ark will not be approached by sin, by sinful individuals. It is physically perfect in view of the spiritual reality that will be contained within. Our Lady is morally perfect, free from sin in view of the reality of the one who will dwell inside of her. That's why if Mary is described as the Ark of the Covenant, if scripture wants us to view her as the Ark of the Covenant, then it means thereby She's going to be immaculate. She's going to be free from sin the whole of her life. Let's see how scripture responds. The evidence. The evidence that scripture wants us to see Mary as the Ark of the Covenant, as immaculate. Particularly, we find this in the 
the narrative of the, of the visitation. In the narrative of the visitation of Our Lady to her cousin Elizabeth, we see clear and direct parallels of the journey of the Ark of the Covenant when David takes the Ark and when David leaps for joy in the presence of the Ark. And where the Ark remains in the house of Obed Edom for three months. We see a clear parallel. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country, a city of Judah. She entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb. The Ark contains its precious treasure. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She acclaimed with a loud cry, just like David here. Mary remained with her three months, just like the ark remained at the house of Obed-Edom for three months. John leaps for joy like David did. There are clear parallels many people have written on this. Virgin Mary is depicted as the Ark of the Covenant in this journey, in this visitation narrative. Saint Luke also repeats the same message a little bit earlier. Well, we are told the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. This Ark, the Virgin Mary, like the old Ark, will be overshadowed by a cloud. Almighty God, she is the Ark, perfect, morally speaking, just as the Ark was perfect, physically speaking, and would not allow any moral imperfection near it. In the book of Revelation, we see again the Virgin Mary as the Ark of the Covenant. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, loud noises, peals of thunder, an earthquake and heavy hail, and a great portent appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She brought forth a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. There is a, a, an ark seen in the heavenly temple. And then in the very next verse, there is the woman, a woman in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. There is a parallel here. It's only humans that have put these chapter divisions in. For St. John, or whoever wrote the book of Revelation, the two were superimposed, the ark and the woman. It was one reality, and the woman brings forth our Lord, Jesus Christ. The Virgin Mary here is being compared very explicitly to the ark, the perfect ark, morally speaking. We read in the book of Wisdom, Wisdom will not enter a deceitful soul, nor dwell in a body enslaved to sin. The Virgin Mary, the Ark of the Covenant, does not, cannot have wisdom, eternal wisdom, dwelling within her, if she is a deceitful soul, if she is a body enslaved to sin. But she is there for not. She is the Ark of the Covenant. Wisdom is able to dwell in her because her body is not deceit her body is not enslaved to sin. Her soul is not deceitful. We know this because our Lord is dwelling in her. Therefore, this follows. And again in the book of Revelation, nothing unclean shall enter heaven, nor anyone who practice abomination or falsehood. The indwelling of Almighty God, his sanctuary, cannot be blemished. It cannot be blemished. And so the Virgin Mary because she carries him, it's befitting that she is free from sin. And we know the Ark of the Covenant was perfect, physically speaking. And so Our Lady, Scripture wants us to see her as the Ark of the Covenant. Therefore, Scripture wants us to understand she is perfect, morally speaking. Indeed, the Ark was perfect, morally speaking, insofar as Almighty God would not allow that Ark to be defiled by any sinful human. And so Our Lady, the Ark of the Covenant, is 
the Immaculate. May the Immaculate Virgin Mary intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.